Hi everyone, in this viewer request tutorial, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step how to create an infinite loop brush in Affinity Designer that can be used on a straight curve or around a closed circular shape like this one. This request came from viewers of a creative session that I created for Serif, the makers of Designer, for their YouTube channel, and I've linked that above as well as in the description below. Now I'm using Designer version 2 for desktop, however, you can easily create this brush in the iPad version, both 1 and 2, using the same process. So let's get started. I have a blank canvas set to 1200 pixels at 300 DPI. Now the DPI of the canvas is the most important piece because in designer, most vector brushes, aside from the solid brushes, are vector in name only. While you can use nodes to manipulate them, they're created with a raster nozzle, in other words, something with pixels. So while we'll be using vectors to create the loop shape, we're going to be exporting it as either a PNG or a JPEG and setting the DPI at 300 will ensure we have a good high quality output with our final brush. Now you can create your loop by hand using the pen or pencil tools. However, I'm going to show you a really quick way to create one using the teardrop shape. The first thing I want to do is create a black background rectangle. Eventually when we export this to create the brush, we need a white shape on a black background. So I'm just going to grab my rectangle tool and I'll command click the canvas and set this to the size of my canvas. And right now I have it set as a stroke, but I want to center this up and change it to a black fill. Now I'm going to lock this in place and turn it off for right now because we don't need that black background until we go to export it. The next thing I want to do is turn my grids on along with snapping. This is going to make it easier to ensure that the two ends of our loop meet up exactly at the edges of the canvas so that we have no gaps with the final brush. You can either use the keystroke command apostrophe or go up to view and show grid. You don't need anything extensive, it's just something to snap to. Now speaking of snapping, let's go up to the options for snapping and just make sure that snap to grid is on. That's going to allow you to get these notifications when you're on an intersection or one of the lines. With all that in place, I'll go ahead and turn this into a stroke and I'm going to grab my teardrop shape and just drag out a large kind of wide teardrop. Now, whenever you're using the shape tool, of course, you have a shape layer, it's not a curve. And ultimately what we want to do is break the point of this loop to get two separate nodes. And I can't do that until I convert this. The first thing I'm going to do is flip this so the point is on the bottom. And then while it's still selected, I'm going to go right here to convert to curves. That gives me these three smooth nodes and this one sharp node that make up the overall loop. And that means I can now use my node tools. So I wanna select this bottom one. I'm just gonna click on it till it's blue. I'll go right up to the contextual menu and I want to choose break curve. That's going to break it into two separate nodes rather than one. Before we do anything else, let's just center this up again. I'll go up to alignment and I'm going to align horizontally and vertically. I just like to keep everything centered and that way I know where my brush sits. So I'll go back to my node tool once I've done that. I already have this one selected. I'm going to click and drag it over to the side and I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see what happens. I want to drag this until I get a yellow node. So it lights up in yellow and that means I've hit an intersection and I'm at the exact edge of the canvas. Now, one thing I want to show you though, is because in my stroke panel, I have my cap set to rounded, you can see that there's a little dip here. And I actually don't want that. I want to change this to a butt cap because ultimately I want the edge of this to be flat against the, the canvas. So I'll go ahead and change it to butt cap. Now that gave me an even bigger gap, but we're going to correct that in a moment. So I wanna go ahead and back out again, and this time grab this node, and I'm going to drag it to the exact same line and again to the very edge of the canvas. And once again, I have that gap there. What we need to do is use the handles on either of these nodes to pull this loop down. And what that's going to do is force this line right here to follow and kind of flatten out. So this one's already selected. This is the handle for this smooth curve. I'm going to click and I'll hold shift down and just drag straight down. And I'm going to drag it down to the same line that I dragged those nodes down to. I'll click on the other one here, grab its handle, and do the same exact thing. And now if I zoom in to either side here, you can see there's no longer a gap, which means that it's going to meet up exactly on both sides. You can also see that the line of my curve is sort of flattening out here along the line of the grid. 
Once you have your loop in place, you can set your stroke width to whatever size you'd like. I'm actually going to make mine nice and big. I already have a medium size and a thinner one. So I'm gonna change this to 150 pixels and just make a nice fat node. Everything's still in place. These two sides are going to match up. Let me just make sure that it's all centered up still. So I'll just click there and hit apply. Again, I just like to keep the shape itself centered on my canvas. You can also play around with the pressure settings here in the stroke panel. The only thing that I would caution you is that you want to make sure that these two control points, which control these two nodes, stay at the exact same level because again, you need these to match up at either end to make this an infinitely looping brush. I'm going to leave mine alone and keep the width the same around the entire loop. Now that I have everything in place, I'm going to select that curve layer and I want to change my stroke to pure white. So I'll go right to these quick colors and choose that. And I'm going to turn that black background on again. Now remember, whenever you're exporting something for a vector brush like this, it needs to be on a black background and a white object. I'll head up to file and choose export. And I'm going to keep the size as is. I'm also going to keep this as a PNG. You can see which file size is larger or smaller. I'm just gonna stick with PNG and hit export. And I'll call this largest loop. You can call it whatever you'd like. Just save it somewhere that you can access it again within Designer. Now that the loop nozzle is created, we can create the actual brush. I'm going to turn these two layers off for now because we don't need them. I'll go to my brushes panel and I have a category set up for looping brushes. If you want to set up a new category for yours, just go to the burger menu in the panel and choose create new category. Because mine's already set up, I'm going to go right down here to the bottom and choose new textured intensity brush. I'll find that raster nozzle that I just created and click open and it's going to set up the brush here. Now we need to edit this because right now this isn't set up to repeat, it's set up to stretch that single raster element that we just created. So I'll double click to open the edit menu. For those of you on the iPad version, you can swipe right on the brush and you'll see a flyout menu that will allow you to open the edit function. Now I'm not going to change too many settings here, but the very first thing that I want to do is change this from a stretched brush, which is taking this single nozzle and stretching it to repeat. And that's going to repeat that single object across the line here. I also want to change the brush width. It's giving me the default of 64 pixels. I'm gonna change that to 100. You can set yours to whatever you'd like. You can also rename it here if you'd like. It's automatically going to apply the name of the file. You can change the size variance if you'd like. It's going to give you a taper if you want. I'm going to leave mine as is and I'll click close. And now I have my brush in place. I can grab my pen tool and just grab a colorful stroke here. The size that I use doesn't matter because it's automatically going to apply the width that I set my brush at. So I have a loop there. I can use my pencil to do the same thing. And of course I can grab my vector brush and draw out a loop shape. And finally, because this is an infinite brush, I can also create a shape. I'll grab my circle and I'm just going to drag out my shape. I'll go to my brushes and click on that new brush and I have that tiled all the way around the circle. And because we created it so that the two ends match up, there's absolutely no gap. Now, ultimately this brush is going to work best on rounded shapes like ovals, circles and the like. You can use it on something like a heart shape, but you're gonna find that it gets a bit strange at the point where the heart kind of tucks into itself at the top. It's just something to keep in mind. And then one more thing to keep in mind is that when you're using it on a circle like this, you want to make sure that you go to your stroke panel and turn on scale with object. If you don't, when you size this up and down, it's going to change the look of the brush. Now, if that's what you want, you're fine, but if you want it to stay the way you created it, just turn that on. And then when you size up and down, it's going to keep the brush exactly the way that you created it. And that's it. The same process can be used to create any infinite brush. Just remember, make sure that your two furthest points on either side of your canvas meet up and match exactly so there are no gaps. No matter what shape you decide to create, as long as you follow that, you'll be all set. If you've enjoyed my teaching style, I invite you to check out my full length classes on my Skillshare site, as well as my own independent site, The Creator Collage. Both are linked below. If you have any questions or suggestions for a tutorial you'd like to see here on my channel, let me know in the comments below. I have lots more in the works, but in the meantime, you might wanna check out one of these two next. Thanks for watching.